Welcome to AF Tutorials for a brand new tutorial series featuring Adobe Premiere. My name is Arnold Faller and this time we're going to take a slightly different approach. Instead of recording webinars of more than half an hour, I'm trying to create a series of short videos in which we address more and more advanced concepts. So the first one or two will get you instantly familiar with the topic. The next couple of tutorials will give you the necessary tools to work on your own projects. Before we get started, I would like you to get out there and record a couple of 10 second video clips with your camera. It doesn't matter what camera you have or what you're filming, the clips also don't need to be uh, precisely 10 seconds. So once you have the clips ready and transferred to your computer, you start Adobe Premiere and we will get right into it. Have fun, don't forget to subscribe and um, if you have any additional questions, make sure you place them in the comments below. When you get started in Adobe Premiere, it will look like this and we're going to start a new project and the only thing that you need to specify is the location where your project will be saved. So I'm going to quickly place that, here it is, in my folder and hit OK. Then you should see the user interface of Adobe Premiere. We're going to choose between different user interface layouts and you can first of all see that you have the different layouts named up here. We're going to start with the first one called assembly, which is the simplest one if you just want to assemble a couple of clips. If you don't have this clip here, you can always go to window and make sure uh, that you have the diff uh, you can switch between the different workspaces here. So we're going to start with the simple one assembly. With, uh, on the user interface assembly, you have the, all the medias that go into your project here on the left side. You have your control monitor here on the top and you have your timeline, the most important part in the bottom right corner. So let's get started and bring those three clips or those couple of clips that you have recorded. Please just pick three of them uh, in your, uh, into your project folder. To get your three video clips into your project, uh, you just double click your project folder. That will open the import dialog and you pick your 10 second clips. So I have three clips where I not even did go outside. I just filmed my camera with my phone. And here are my three video clips. Um, there is different ways those uh, clips will look like. So down here you can choose if you want a list view or if you want little thumbnails. I personally prefer the list view because if you have more than three clips, uh, it's soon it's pretty uh, quick getting messy when you have the icon view. So the next thing is that you don't have, and you can see it here over in the timeline, you don't have a sequence yet. I didn't want to create a sequence in the very first tutorial because uh, we, we can do that anytime later. So let's have a quick look at our camera settings and those might be of course different with your camera. If you take one of the clips here you can see it has been recorded and when you hold your mouse on it it pops up in a little window. It has been recorded in 30 frames per second, so it says 30 FPS, it says 30.01, but that's not that important. And when you hold your mouse on it or you scroll on the bottom here a little bit further to the right, you can also see the size of the video right now, 3840 by 2160 with a pixel aspect ratio of 1. That is important, but for the beginning it's not the most important thing because the way we're going to start is that Premiere does everything for you because we're going to start by selecting one of the clips and pulling it down onto the new icon. It's right next to the recycle bin so make sure you don't miss it onto the new icon and what it does it automatically creates a new composition oh sorry a new sequence and in the new sequence, the clip that you used to drag on it has been already included. So right now, we have not only four, three clips here in my project window, but four. The one that's called camera one is my sequence. So I'm going to rename it by clicking on it and call it this is my sequence. Just to make sure 
to see the difference. Those are my video clips and this is my sequence. Has a different icon, has a different color in there and so on. But all the settings are the same size and frames per second wise. Of course, also the audio quality is the same as in my clip because I pulled it down onto the new button. So here is uh, my what I see and what I see here is a little a little a time indicator or a line when I move it you can see that uh, moves the video I can also hit play here and it will show or play my video also you can see that you have both a video track and an audio track in my uh, timeline I have three video clips right now num uh, called V1, V2 and V3 and I have four audio tracks A1 to A4. Uh, my video clip can be, and you can select your video, uh, can be on any of those video tra tracks, so it can be moved here, and also the audio track can be moved. But let's keep it together. Also, when you move it in time, and up here is your timeline, usually this uh, timeline is hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. And we have 30 frames per second, so it counts all the way zero, from 0 to 29. And the next one will be 0 again, just one more second. So when you move it in time, you can see that both the audio and the video are linked together. So they are synchronized and cannot be uh, uh, move. They can be later on, but this is something for one of the next tutorials. So let's uh, bring this here. And you will also notice that my timeline is much longer than you see here on the window. That's why we have a zoom function. And this is the scroll bar down here. And when you uh, take the corners of the scroll bar, you can see that you can zoom in and zoom out in time. So more time will be displayed and less time will be displayed. So let's make sure I picked one of my 10 second clips there. I think they are only eight seconds long or so. Um, one of my clips, uh, and let's make sure it is about uh, one third of the timeline. So I have more space here. By the way, right now the sequence, the timeline is, um, it ends somewhere around uh, 10 minutes or so, but it can any time be made longer or shorter. Now, here is my, uh, here is my uh, first clip. I'm going to bring in the second clip. Uh, make sure you, this time, you pull the second clip right into the timeline, but not on top of the, on the first one, but after the first one. You can now pick right away in which audio and video track you want to drop it, or you can just drop it anywhere and then remove it. Make sure both video and audio clip are not in the same track as the previous one. Now, uh, our new, of course, we only see it when we put the, the time indicator on top of it. And, um, yeah, top of it, then we see the content of the video. We also notice that when we move it in time, that the video clips automatically snap to the to this time indicator also when i move it away you notice that they snap to the end of the previous clip so that is pretty simple to arrange them somehow you can uh, pr uh, just make sure you snap them and then they are put uh, right after each other you can also place them on top of each other. Now it is important that they are not in the same tracks. So if you place them on top of each other, you notice that there's one on top and then there's one on the bottom. If I move my time indicator to the, to the area where they both overlap, you can see that the video only displays the top one. So it is my stack of video tracks is read from the top. So whatever is in a more top track will be visible and the Top one will be hidden behind or underneath. The audio tracks, that is different. They are both played simultaneously. So if there are two audio tracks here, there's no audio in my clips, but there are two audio tracks and they both will be played. So they kind of like um, mix together. So let's bring it back and separate those clips uh, a little bit more. And I'm gonna make sure they, um, they snap to each other and I bring in my third clip. My third clip 
This time again, make sure you don't place it at the same track as the previous ones. You can go either in here uh, and, and you can move the audio video to whatever track you want. Uh, now I would like to show you one more thing before we finish our little project here. And that is, um, if you look at the new clip that I just imported, it's the same thing. It shows the camera from a, a little bit more close-up angle. Um, if I sel select my clip and move my mouse to the beginning of the, of the clip, I can take it and move it backwards. That means basically that the first few seconds of my clip will not be shown. So it's not squeezing the clip, it's not speeding it up or anything, it's just taking the first part and not showing it. But it also means that I can anytime select it and pull it back out again. Of course only to the point that it's recorded. It's not The clip is not any longer or shorter, so I can only pull it out to its previous length. Also, the same thing at the back. I can select the back and move it in, and that means the second half of the video will not be shown. And if I pull it back out, it will be shown again. Okay, so um, we are ready to get our video out. This is the first step. So we want to do a really simple thing. So I'm going to um, bring my clips so that they snap each other, uh, snap to each other so that there is no black piece of video in between because we know when I move the time slider to a point where there is no video it will simply render a black background, will bl render the black video. So make sure there is no gap in between and the first one should snap to the beginning. And we are ready to export our video. Before we can do this there is one little thing uh, I forgot to turn on or Usually in, uh, in the Adobe Premiere, in previous versions, it was always turned on. And that is the work area bar. What is that? If you look here in your, uh, in your sequence, here's those three little lines. And when you click on it, you can show the work area bar. The work area bar is a way to select a certain range in your sequence. So right now, the work area bar, you can see it up here is the same as the length of my three clips. But I could also move the work area bar, for example, take the end of it and it automatically snaps to my clip here. I could set it, set the work area bar to only my first two clips. And then when I export my, uh, my movie, it will only export the length of the work area bar if you tell him. And this is the most common way to do it. So before you export it, you always set the work area bar to the length of your three or whatever clips you use. By the way, it automatically does that. You only have to change it um, if you want to export a different range. You can also grab the work area bar in the middle and move it entirely or set it back to uh, the beginning and at the end. So we're ready to export our three movies and the length is only the work area bar, so we're not going to export all the 10 minutes, just the length of those three clips. Therefore, you go to File, Export Media. And in Export Media, it opens the window for exporting it. The first thing is, by default, it says work area here. But I always check, make sure that it really says work area. So what will be exported? Only the range of your work area. There's also other ways to define either the entire sequence or certain in and out points and so on. But for right now, we want to do the work area. Then, in which format do I want to export it? I would like to export it in a format that I can upload to YouTube, for example, that has an nice compromise between good quality and low file size and therefore I'm going to pick first the four I'm not going to use match sequence settings because that means I would have export the same video settings that I Im imported and that is the, the settings from my phone so I don't want to do that I want to pick a H264 so in from the list here you pick H264 264 that is a compression method and out of the preset list you pick or I pick in this case a YouTube 1080p full HD setting that means it will be slightly reduced in size 1920 by 1080 it still has 30 frames per second it has audio compressed in AAC quality that's the usual 
uh, YouTube quality settings and it, I will export audio and video. So just pick H.264 and the YouTube 1080p setting. All you need to do is define your output name. So I'm going to call it, um, I don't know, output. And now there's two ways to create the movie file. You can either, if you have more than one file to create, you could choose Q. That means it creates a render queue. And once you're done, you can render all the exports. But in my case, I just want to export one video. So I hit export and that renders the video. That goes quite fast. So you see about 10 seconds. There's only one thing I forgot to do. Usually I do it before I export my video. I'm going to save my project. The project usually automatically saves. Remember, you have defined the name and the, uh, the location in the very beginning. Uh, and if you hit File Save, uh, it will save your project right before you export it. So if something goes wrong, the computer crashes, you still have the last version saved. And we're done. That should give us a video clip. Let me quickly, um, let me quickly open that up. So here it is. And let's maximize it. And of course, nothing special going on. My three clips, there is an, a cut between them. So there's no kind of transition. They just put one clip right after the other and the third one in detail. OK, that's it for the first one. I hope there was a, 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 a brief introduction. If you want to know more, stay tuned for the next video. And I'll see you there.